Continuing 6.2, flooding. What would be the ideal conditions for flooding? I might say a lot of rain all over the watershed that falls almost at once. So like many inches in a few days, following a drought-like condition so that the soil moisture was extremely low and the water just quickly runs into all the streams and into the river. I might also say an extended drizzle lasting for weeks and weeks over the entire watershed so that the soil becomes saturated and water eventually has no place to go but directly into the streams that quickly flows into the river. These scenarios include the concepts of one, a mountain distribution of precipitation and drainage basin, two, rate at which the precipitation soaks into the earth, three, how quickly surface runoff reaches the river, and four, amount of moisture in the soil. Flood terms. We will go over these flood related terms. Flood discharge, stage, flood stage, hydrograph, recurrence interval, flash floods, and downstream floods. Flood discharge is discharge of the stream at the point where water overflows the channel banks. Hard to measure because the stream often overflows its banks in many different places. What is discharge? Remember, it is volume per time or velocity times the cross-sectional area. The picture to the right shows where flood waters broke through a levee, which would be one good place to measure flood discharge. You could get a velocity of the water and an estimate of cross-sectional area here. Stage is the height of water in the river above an arbitrary datum. Let me say that again. Stage is the height of water in the river above an arbitrary datum. Let me break that down for you. Stage in geologic terms is not in the theater unless there is a stream running through the theater, which would be cool. Stage refers to how high the water is. Now I am sure you, being familiar with streams and rivers, know that there are changes in the river depth. In fact, we just talked about deep pools and more shallow riffles. You might be asking yourself, what would the height of the water in the stream mean? I could get lots of different values in just one afternoon. Well, that is why it is the height of the stream in a particular place. The place is pretty arbitrary, but it is the place. And the height of water is always measured there from that particular point. You may have noticed some measuring sticks permanently placed in streams. Those make the stage easier to measure. Flood stage is the elevation of water surface that is likely to cause damage to property. Not necessarily when the stream overflows its banks, but when property might be damaged. These two images are from the Truckee River, Reno, Nevada, 1997 flood. Definitely damaged property. And the steam shovel looks like it's trying to save the bridge by removing debris dams so water can still flow underneath and not over top. Here is a hydrograph, which we will talk about more in a bit, but you can see stage and flood stage on it. The bottom axis is time, and the y-axis is stage in feet on the left. And on the right, you see the equivalent flow or discharge in kilocubic feet per second, i.e. thousands of cubic feet per second. This is for the Shasheen River at Wilmington, Massachusetts. Let's look at the stage. How high is the river usually? If you said about three feet, you are right. Action stage. 
is at five feet and is when flood warnings can be issued. How deep is the river at flood stage? Seven feet. How long did it take for the stage to rise from normal levels to flood stage? When property is likely to be damaged? About 21 hours. What was the stage when the river crested? Probably at 10.5 feet. Is this high for this river? I hope you said yes. It was a record stage. And before we move on, notice the shape of the line on the graph, kind of a bell curve. This is a very typical shape for a hydrograph that displays time and stage. Next term is hydrograph, which shows changes in discharge and depth. Hydro means water. So technically these are graphs having to do with water. There are three variables we are looking at time, stage, and discharge. Hopefully you are familiar with each of these. Stage is measured in units of length. It's just the depth of the water in the stream at an arbitrary datum. Examples are feet or meters. Discharge is volume of water that passes a point in the river over a given time. And it has units of volume per time. Examples are cubic feet per second, CFS for short, or cubic meters per second, CMS for short. Time for a flood is often measured in days, but could be other units too. We like time to be along at the bottom of the hydrograph, the x-axis, and then see how stage or discharge change over time. As seen previously, we can also equate stage to discharge and plot both at the same time. As a flood occurs, both stage and discharge increase, crest, and then decrease, approximating a bell curve. That takes care of the hydrograph on the left and in the middle. The hydrograph on the right is equating stage and discharge. What do you notice about the shape of the line on this graph? Well, I bet you saw it is not a bell curve at all. But it is not a straight line either. You may see that it curves, with the curve being steeper at the lower values toward the left and shallower at higher values to the right. This means that at lower values, stage is increasing faster than discharge. And at higher values, discharge is increasing more than stage. Why is that? Well, the answer has to do with geometry. Here is a cross section of a stream. Let's increase the stage which is an increase in height of water in the stream. We'll call it stage one. Now let's increase the stage of the stream by about the same amount and call it stage two. Okay, now let's consider the corresponding discharge. To simplify things, we're going to assume the velocity of the stream stays the same for both one and two. However, in reality, the velocity would probably increase from stage one to stage two, but we'll keep it simple. Now look at the change in cross-sectional area. Which cross-sectional area is bigger, one or two? You should say two. So as the height of the stream rose by the same amount, the amount of discharge increased by more. Let's add stage three. 
increase the height by about the same amount. But now the discharge must increase by a whole heap to support the raise in height. This is the part of the curve to the right that begins to level off. Now, why doesn't the curve have a bell shape like the other two hydrographs? Let's look at it. As the flood begins to recede, the stage begins to go down. But what is the discharge going to do? It is going to go down too. Along the same path that it rose. If this hydrograph was bell-shaped, that would mean that as the stage decreases, the discharge would continue to increase. That would be very weird. That would mean that there was some serious channel widening erosion going on combined with some new water source or something. This is not going to happen for normal stream flooding. As the flood begins to recede, the stage begins to go down. Discharge is going down too, along the same path that it rose. Flooding up, receding down. Up, down, on the same curve. Recurrence interval is the average time between flood events of a certain size. You will probably be playing with recurrence intervals in lab. A recurrence interval is actually a probability of a flood of a certain magnitude occurring each year. So a 10 year flood has a one in 10 or 10% 10 chance of occurring each year. A 100 year flood has a one in 100 or 1% 1 chance of occurring each year. And so you could get unlucky and get a 100 year flood two years in a row. Also, as mentioned earlier, climate change is changing the frequency and magnitude of floods. So we might need to reevaluate the probability of floods with more recent data. In the image below, there are stage and discharge depictions for the 10 year, 50 year, and 100 year floods, along with the corresponding floodplain. Notice that the floods of greater magnitude occur less often. This can remind us of the inverse relationship between magnitude and frequency, if you'd like to remember. <laughs>